So today was somewhat of a failure. Sure, the end result looked uh, like turtle a bit, but it looked a lot more cartoonish than I wanted by a very significant margin. The uh, main issue, as I identify it, is that even though I had a uh, toy turtle uh, by my side when I was carving it to use as reference, I didn't look at it at all during the process until it was well too late to do so. And uh, because of that, the um, result, th th this carving is a lot more of a uh, from memory what my mind thinks a uh, turtle looks like. And uh, it's a lot more cartoony than uh, the reference I was wanting to use. So calling it a fa failure may be a bit uh, intense for uh, what it truly was. It was more of a, the challenge that I wanted to have to make to give more details by having a excellent reference nearby. That challenge wasn't at all what I ended up doing. I ended up doing a carving from memory, which I obviously do not excel at. So uh, I did most of the tracing. Uh, I did a bit of tracing beforehand on the wood block to for uh, the main uh, shape of the turtle. I wanted to uh, make sure that I, that, I, that I had enough room to uh, do it. And then I drew uh, on the sides a bit uh, the uh, shape I wanted, uh, where I wanted the legs to end up, where I wanted the, how high I wanted the head to be, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, and here I had to define a bit the neck. The, uh, one other thing that also caused me a bit of trouble is um, the diagonal. Uh, I had to uh, carve it at diagonal for it to for to maximize the amount of wood I had, which is better in general as to as far as the um, economy goes. But for um, properly understanding what I'm doing, uh, doing it on a diagonal like this instead of a straight on all other carvings I've made it was a perfect profile and a perfect front here uh, because it was in a diagonal and I had no um, the types of reference I was making weren't um, sufficient uh, the, the type of drawings I made to guide my cuts weren't uh, as useful as they would have been in other similar projects. Uh, and then one of the other issues I faced was that because uh, I was making it on a slice like this and most of the work would be done on the uh, part I sawed off or uh, the end grain, it was very tough to remove um, the amount of wood required for legs for the legs to be properly defined because uh, for this project more than any other before the underside was very important to me because um, most other creature I made so far were really longer and more detailed relative to the surface they cover, I guess I want to say. The, the the legs were... The amount of room for the leg was insignificant compared to the size of the body in general. So I was happy to just remove a single layer and call it quits for other projects. But for this one, because a turtle's... Relative to its body, a turtle is much higher up than uh, most other things so uh, I wanted to really give it some proper height that would be noticeable more than uh, I did on the previous ones but um, 
that was made difficult by the properties of the wood and how I decided to portion my uh, project. So uh, first, when uh, trying to remove the wood, I tried to uh, remove it by large chips with uh, one of my knives, like this. But uh, it was a um, challenging process and uh, I quickly realized that I wouldn't be able to go uh, do this to the center. Uh, there's a very specific angle needed to be able to make some such large chips and uh, it would be impossible to have that angle in the center. So uh, here I use, I'm detailing a bit the uh, shape of the tail and I'm removing, uh, I'm rounding the corners right now to have about the circle I want for the toho. And um, then I'm going to be switching uh, methods for uh, removing material in the bottom of the block and the belly of the turtle. And the first pass I made, I was trying with this uh, chisel to use it uh, kind of like I, how I use my knives, but with a different uh, level of, a different orientation of force. Like uh, with the knives, it's uh, just a leverage, and here it's uh, more of a push and um, a swing, I'll say which uh, worked well, but removed way too thin a layer. And uh, the angle needed on a blade for it to dig deep was a problem with how the uh, knife, the, how the handle of the knife is a, uh, how much thicker the handle of the chisel is compared to the blade of the chisel, which would was preventing me from being able to dig as deep as I wanted all the way. Like all central parts were always harder than the size when I was doing this uh, first attempt. And given how hard and long it had been to do uh, just one layer with this knife, uh, I ended up deciding to go with uh, the rounded blade, which uh, will appear any time now. I'm going to keep talking anyway. Uh, to use the um, curved blade to remove uh, wood in long strips, just like this. These strips uh, gave me a lot of uh, room to start new strips, to uh, shape around them. Uh, I had to be careful not to create splinters and here I'm marking the total height I wanted my cuts to go about for the legs to be satisfactorily uh, marked and uh, here I'm going um, towards the bottom as much as, po as possible with the uh, this chisel because in the other direction, it tended to um, split the grain of the wood and make, um, and I was worried that it would uh, damage the uh, circular edge that I wanted to preserve for the shell. So that's why I'm going towards the center most of the time and uh, from the top towards the bottom also, because since the bottom part will always be removed compared to the top part, at least in this part of the process. Uh, it was safe and uh, a no-brainer to do it this way. Because even if it slipped, even if it broke something, it would, al it would always break something that would be removed anyway, or wouldn't be that ba big of a deal. One of the big issues with doing this way is that the uh, surface finish uh, when looking, f when picking up the turtle and looking at it, the surface finish of the underside is absolutely terrible. It's a ragged mess, but it is um, not a problem because 
Yes, the height of the toe will be noticeable and is important to be noticeable, but it's not it's meant to be a decoration that sits there so it the beauty of the other side since it's invisible doesn't matter as much to me. Now looking at a timeline and uh, knowing the process, it looks like most, almost half of the entire carving was a just carving the underside, which is a bit of a surprise right now because um, as I was doing it, I didn't know exactly when the end point would be, so I didn't realize just how long and slow the process of removing the underside of the turtle was. It's, uh, I wouldn't say open my eyes, but it, w it, um, it really makes me reconsider and uh, the technique I use. There must be a better way that I'm just not seeing, but so far using this specific chisel is the best way I found to work against the grain like this in big chunks, which may not be a good reflex. Maybe I should uh, be more patient with this kind of surface and work with a different technique that would be slower, but give a better result. I don't, on the long term, I don't know. Mostly just thinking aloud right now. Here I just redraw my line because it faded with the um, friction from uh, my movement. Oh no, I'm no, I redraw the line because now I'm uh, doing the top side. Yes, yes, I, I remember now. So uh, I'm starting by shaping the tail, which uh, I went too far with this uh, big knife, so uh, I ended up breaking the tail. Uh, at the time I broke it, uh, I didn't bother trying to uh, reconnect it because uh, there was still enough wood that I would be able to shape it later uh, as needed. So um, it wasn't worth bother trying to uh, use glue on it. So uh, the way I did the shell shape which is by the way not at all the shape of a turtle's shell according to the toy uh, I was using as reference. Uh, I was meant to use a reference, but didn't. Um, but basically what I did was that I did, from the line I drawn a slice to remove all of the wood above it, did a whole circle the whole way around like this, and then I went a bit above the line and did the exact same thing, another circle, and uh, so on and so forth until I had uh, gone uh, uh, the whole way through and I was near the, uh, what I like to call the target, uh, the uh, dot I made uh, on the m at the center of the shell. That's what that's where I was trying to aim my cuts at uh, so that the dome of the shell would meet there. It didn't work as I planned by drawing the dot because uh, by the time I was done doing the the uh, shell with this technique, I finally remember that I had reference and started trying to salvage the shape of the shell. Because uh, even though 
in cartoons, they're mostly drawn with the perfect dome. The one I was using as reference, at least, has a uh, more of the uh, slant and roof-like uh, shape. It's a um, yes. In looking at a side, it's a dome, but looking at front, it's more of a point. So. Um, and there is a, a spine, a spine-like ridge at the center, which I didn't re realize was there until much, much too late. So here I'm splitting the head from the body to to give a bit of a uh, neck shape. You'll see the exact moment I notice uh, my reference. The moment I start drawing is uh, the moment I re remember it. Which you'll see is uh, way too close to the end for it to be any use at all. Well, no. Uh, I Had I not been tired and pessimistic about the uh, that specific piece because of how hard it was to make the other side, uh, I probably could have tried to salvage it with the uh, reference in tow. But uh, at that point I was exhausted and I didn't really want to. And maybe eventually I'll come back to it and finish it with the uh, proper... Sh trying to make it a bit of a better shell shape. But I don't think I will do so. Um, I might go back and paint it once uh, I've uh, set up, I have my painting setup done. But um, other than that, I don't think I'll revisit this uh, specific project. Because pa painting, I'll be able to do at least a um, texture and uh, to have at least the uh, color and texture right even if the shape is completely wrong so uh, that'll be a good addition but um, and f fairly simple addition because uh, going back with a knife will require a bit of setup a bit of cleanup that I don't really want to do for this specific project and uh, it would uh, also be tiring because of the hard surface and I don't really want to fit into my schedule another uh, session of carving because uh, it's really tiring for the hands to uh, do this. At least right now, maybe once I'm uh, more used to it and uh, my hands are stronger, I can afford to uh, do more carving a week but uh, right now one session a week is more than enough and I don't want to uh, take one of my slots for uh, finishing this turtle. So here I'm trying to have a more of a uh, straight uh, to, to do the point I was talking about uh, from the front um, I didn't go nearly far enough, but uh, that's because I was tired at that point. I just made both sides symmetric and made sure that the, the spine null line was visible because of the geometry I made to suggest the correct shape. And uh, at the um, top left corner, you can see the toy I was using as reference. You can see. Uh, I, like, I knew the neck would be that long because I used the reference when I was drawing the initial sketch on the top of the block. So I just thought of it as a turtle with its neck and head mostly hidden in its carapace, but uh, in its shell. But that's. Uh, but other than that, here I'm doing the mouth. 
by scraping uh, with uh, one of the chisels. Here again, it broke slightly, not uh, nearly as bad as the uh, as it did for the uh, tail, but uh, still a bit. And the eyes. And uh, with this, the project is done. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, feel free to stop by anytime you want.